So uh, what up guys welcome to another episode of Big Talk today we've got Adi for those of you who don't know who Adi is Adi is this rapper based out of Mumbai who drops straight out fire on this track called Rain Girl guys please therefore check that out <laughs> what's happening Adi Thank you so much Jasmeer for having me and Kunal um and thanks for thanks for the compliment on Rain Girl man I'm I'm really glad that you enjoyed it Uh, Adi, tell us something about yourself. How did you get into music? Uh, are you primarily have you always been into hip hop, or is something new that you're exploring? Sure. Uh, so I grew up in a house with like 16 people, <laughs> and I was the youngest of 16. So um, what happened was I got like this amazing filtration of generations of music. So uh, like I'd listen to like my granddad's records of Muhammad Rafi, and then. Dad's records of Elvis Presley, and then my brother introduced me to like Lil Wayne and Kanye West and all these guys when he was growing up. So what happened was like I had all these influences and I just wanted to like put them in a bundle, you know. So mm. for me, when I started out making music, it was mainly like my mom putting me in classes like tabla classes, piano classes, and stuff like that. So it was very like uh, I guess music theory based. I never really broke out of that, so I always wanted to. be a singer and stuff like that but then as i grew up and like i got more involved in the culture i went to uh, new york to finally study and i got exposed to that culture it was just like it was a whole other thing man it was like a feeling you know that you have and then it just went from there dude i feel artists these days are generally you know looking to show their versatility as well like you know like i mentioned before like kendrick is coming up with his new album now and it's supposed yeah. to be like intensely rock influence you know you don't expect something like that from someone like kendrick <laughs> dude yeah and it's all about adapting to the culture right like you don't want to bore your listeners which is why like artists like tyler the creator are popping off yeah. right now because they they do something very different So tell us more about the creative process, like you know, with Rain Girl and in general, like how do you like kind of go about the entire you know journey? Sure. So um, with most of the songs that I approach, it's a very like it's a very structured way of writing. I will always try and like plan out which section should come after what, and it should make sense musically. But that comes from like a music theory background. With Rain Girl, I didn't care at all. Like you know, it was just like a process of me just putting in some feel into it. And I don't think my music had that before, which is why when people listen to that, they could tell that there was like something different about it. It was just me having fun on the track instead of like thinking very structurally and thinking very like in a very meticulous way. It was just like me having fun on it, and it was like very a cool organic. exploration. Yeah, very organic. Yeah. Nice. So, in the future, like, are you planning more to uh, tracks like Rain Girl? You said that you are uh, in process of launching your own EP. Why don't you tell us something more about that? Sure. So, um, I always want to make music like that I enjoy listening to, um, and Rain Girl was definitely like a amazing exploration into this world of sampling, and like that's what, like, you know, that's where hip hop came from. So it's something that I'm always, always going to incorporate in my music, and I think it's a cool way to have the Indian market kind of listen to some of the more Western stuff, as well as the Western market listen to some of the Eastern stuff. So that's always a marriage that I'm focused towards. But with this EP, it's more about like the first song on there is a jazz infused sample track. The second song on there is an R and B track with me singing that no one has heard before. Like you know, it's a very like romantic <laughs> kind of song. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and then the third song is actually with Amir from Kashmir, yeah, but and it's more about nice. like the cop. Yeah, it's about like the police culture, like that's very like you know rampant right now in America as well as in India. And I couldn't think of a better person to have on that song than Amir. Yeah, man, like uh, his flow is pretty dope as well. So when yeah. you say like now you're launching a new track with Amir, where do you? What kind of artists do you see yourself collaborating with in the near future? Um, for me, I always want to collaborate with people who have uh, integrity with their songwriting, who can tell a story very easily. Everyone died. The end. Like it, it's it's not like they're going out of their way to kind of fabricate fabricate anything. They're talking about their real life. That's all I look for when I work with people. and that's why like i found success with 
you know, people like NDS who produced Rain Girl because he was yeah. just, he was so organic with the production. It wasn't forced. It was just him doing his thing and me doing my thing. Yeah, I completely agree with you, you know, because now with this entire surge of hip hop coming out, with this surge also comes a lot of like fake artists, you know, like we've got yeah. artists talk, talking about, you know, popping bottles with bitches, going out on shooter, shootouts <laughs> and like, you know, killing people. That shit doesn't happen, like, be real, man, right? <laughs> Dude, yeah, it does not, man. And like, even if it like, for I personally don't like, even though I'm in New York, which is like the party capital of like the world. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't go out. I don't go to clubs. I don't pop bottles. I got to save money. Like, you know, it's yeah. stuff like that. I got, I want to save money so I can spend it at studio sessions and not like on bottles. So. Fair, fair. So how do you, how would you describe the music scene out there in New York as compared to India? For so an artist or coming up artist like you. Sure. So um, with hip hop specifically, it was, it was birthed in New York, right? So it has such a rich history with that one genre that when you do play live shows, you want to make sure that you're bringing your A game because if you aren't good on stage, the crowd will let you know. And I've been in that position where like, I've gone up there with 10 rappers and I sucked, I completely bombed. And the crowd lets you know, and it builds this kind of character. It builds a chip on your shoulder that I don't think I would have got if I was in Bombay because the culture is so new here that people are willing to accept everything. But that's also the good part of Bombay, that people are willing to accept anything and you have the, the wildest range to experiment with. So like you had mentioned, you grew up with a house, you grew up in a house with uh, 16 uh, people and you had like everyone with their own specific kind of, you know, a genre that they listen to their own uh, favorite musicians. Where do you feel your creative influences primarily come from? Mm, that's a good question, man. Uh, I think they mainly come from like this, this era where people really used to put their soul into stuff. Like you, it's, it's something that's, it's intangible, like Stevie Wonder, James Brown, these guys, like they weren't the greatest singers, but they were so successful because they put this feeling that no one else could, could put in that song. So when I look at like my influences, I look at Kanye West, who's not musically trained, but he had this ear for feeling. I look at Lil Wayne, who wasn't musically trained, but had this ear for feeling, you know? It's, it's, it's more about like capturing a, a Jay Dilla, like rest in peace, but like he yeah. started creating beats when he was like a young guy. He has no music theory and he basically created the genre of lo-fi hip hop that we see today. Yeah. So it's just crazy, man. Like those, those people really inspire me to, to, to put more of myself in the music. Speaking of uh, Kanye West, what's your take on the entire new guidelines <laughs> that you set for musician business? <laughs> I mean, oh, uh, you mean with the recent like Twitter stuff? Yeah. Oh, he's absolutely right, dude. If someone at that stage of his career can feel that way with labels, like just think about people like in our position who aren't, who don't even know how, the half of it, you know, like if tomorrow any XYZ label comes to me and they offer me something, yeah, it may sound good on the front end, but they'll screw you on the back end. And I think he's doing a good job of making people aware. Of course, the means by which he's doing it are unquestionable. <laughs> Shut the <laughs> up, I will <laughs> laser you with alien <laughs> eyes and explode your <laughs> head. In terms of uh, upcoming releases, man, like what kind of releases should our audience be looking out for? What, are, what, are, what do you have in store for everyone now? So the first thing that we're doing is releasing this EP called Pigeonhole that we've been talking about. That's coming out somewhere around mid-October. Um, and after that, like, I'm not stopping this year, man. This year, like, I've been writing a lot. I've been recording a lot. And I promise you, every two weeks, like, every fortnight, you're going to get at least one single from me. Wow. And I'm, and I'm working fire. really hard to work with other people around Bombay uh, and do genres that I wouldn't have normally done and you know just try and experiment as much as I can because once you reach a certain level you lose that you lose that privilege of experimenting so what do you feel about what's the story behind uh, pigeonhole like why would you what was behind the name pigeonhole is there any meaning behind that yeah there's a, so pigeonhole is basically where people kind of uh 
force you to be constrained in one type of thing, you know, and just looking at the world right now, metaphorically, ideologically, and literally, it seems like we've been locked in one. Yeah. The people who, who are, who have been stereotyped are being, are being crucified for the way they were born. And third, it's just, it's just the state of everyone wants you to be a certain way and no one wants you to be yourself. And that's what the project is about. Like, it's about not giving a fuck about all of that. Just doing what you love and, you know, people who fuck with you will fuck with you. Being locked in and like having all these uh, restrictions due to the global pandemic, I feel it's also given everyone a chance to really introspect and understand themselves better. Like, at least me, I feel like I'm much more clear in my head as to what I need to do, what I have to do in the future, rather than what I was when I had like a million distractions when everything was open. Definitely. Just me, I'll tell you one thing. If you found yourself being happier when you were in during this pandemic, you are doing the right thing. Like you are on the right path. You're doing, you're working to the right thing. And that's what I feel like this thing has done to us. It's kind of exposed people who were probably doing something that they didn't like. Because if you were yeah. home and all you got to do was what you like, you would fucking enjoy life right now. And that's what musicians are doing right now. We're just enjoying. We're sitting and creating music. It's like ideal for us. Okay. <laughs> are you missing this blank space? Because, you know, for musicians, I feel like apart from obviously creating your music, touring is equally important, I feel like, you oh, know, yeah. going, spreading your music, spreading your music, spreading the love in, in live rather than like, you know, through a screen. So how, how has that experience kind of been for you? Oh, dude, it sucks. Man. I miss the stage so much because, mm. and especially like the first time I ever got on a stage was with my band. Like I used to play with the band. I used to drum for my entire band and I used to rap sometimes okay, and stuff nice. like that. So I miss that entire band feeling and I haven't played with a band like since three years ago, you know? So I can't wait to get back on stage, but I think, we're kind of adapting now with like the live stream stuff and everything. But like, Definitely. I think it's going to push people to do more creative stuff with, with what they have as well in terms of doing stuff at home, setting things up and, you know, just making, making sure that that connection is still there. And uh, I think we've got most of uh, what we needed. Uh, you've okay, been awesome. been like a great guest. Uh, I would just want you to please um, log on to our website. That's knowyourregion.in. We would be happy to send you some stuff for coming or coming over and giving us your time. And of course, yeah. thank you so much, guys, for having me. It was, yeah, it was man, one of the most fun interviews I've had. Thank you for your time, Avi, and best of luck, man, for the new releases. I'm, I'm sure you're going to kill them. Thank you so much. And like, thanks for everyone for showing me so much love.